Hello everyone, I hope you find yourself having a great day. I've got another uh, uh, mediocre, medium level um, Cinema 4D tutorial and today we're going to deal with Projection Man. It has some little nuances and intricacies that uh, hopefully in this video we'll be able to overcome and uh, get you started in it. So I've got an image and it's just something I took a picture of a can uh, in our kitchen and we're going to trim this thing up and put it together so that we can move a 3D camera through it and give it some perspective and some uh, realism. Alright, so let's go ahead and fire up Photoshop. We're going to trim this out into a few pieces and let me minimize this and I'll drag it right on in. Because it's a digital photo, I'm going to do a Control A to select it all, Control C to copy it, and I'm going to close it. And then I'm going to make a new document. And then I'm going to paste it in there by Control V. Okay. We're going to take this can and exclude it as its own element. We're going to take this countertop as its own element and the background as its own element. So we'll have a foreground being the counter the subject, the can, and the background being the background. So let's get started. I'm going to zoom in on the countertop here. And I'm going to take my lasso tool and I'm going to select it just like you see I'm doing. Work my way across here. And we'll go ahead and get in around this can best we can. Best we can. How about that? I'm just marching along here, attempting to isolate the can. And working our best to as accurate as we can. It's not mission critical, but it will help. Okay, so we've got our countertop selected. While we've got it selected, I'm going to do a right click layer via cut. Okay, and it's created a layer of the countertop for us. I'm going to select our primary image, activate it, and at this point, I'm going to go in and get in a little closer this time around. Go in and get this can. I'm pressing Alt to be able to manage my selection here to add uh, points to the selection. And while Alt held, it allows me to uh, continue on adding to the current selection. Again, just be somewhat accurate. And I know the subject matter, a can on the countertop is no, not the most exciting subject matter, but it'll do. Start up basic, getting a grasp on how Projection Man handles primitives or surfaces in regards to applying textures to them, and the better off you'll be. Um, start out simple and then migrate into some more advanced more complex shapes. Okay, so we've got the can selected and I'm going to, while I have my primary image selected, right click choose layer via cut. Okay, so now it's created the can for us. Let me zoom out here. So we've got our can isolated. We've got our background at this point and we've got our foreground. Okay, so I'm going to label this foreground alright and I'm going to take hide that and label this can and I'll label this one background okay background alright so because we're going to have some camera moves with this, we may 
need to see behind that can a little bit so what I'm going to do is I'm going to clone in a bit of this area so that if we do um, move, pan the camera to the side we'll be able to um, see a little bit of what's behind the can um, this isn't mission critical it doesn't have to be perfect but we're, it's a little bit of trickery here so I'm going to press alt while I select the area I'm going to sample from and move over here and just clone that area in where what would be behind the can and it's not like I said mission critical that it be perfect but we do want to have some of it um, taken care of okay so here we go we're going to get that little bit get up above that guy this is just the equivalent of patching an area behind our scene so that uh, we'll be able to if we get some perspective that requires a uh, tilt of the camera or a pan to the side where we would normally have seen behind the camera or behind the can this will, this will cover a little bit of area for us And we're just about to get there. Alright, so that's going to be good there. And what that'll do is patch any of the area behind that can when we made our cut that uh, might have uh, produced a line from that cut. And we can see we've got everything looking pretty good. A little bit on the countertop here that's showing you can see this little bit of a line right here. So what I'm going to do with that is with the background I'm going to clone some of that background downward. And we don't need very much, you just need some. You can fast forward past this if you like. But uh, this as isn't absolutely necessary if you're only doing a zoom in Projection Man. But just as soon as you start getting off axis with a uh, rotation or uh, raising the elevation of your camera you'll see that uh, where this comes in handy to uh, provide you a little bit of leeway in that particular camera move and just about there Alright, so if I turn this back on, you'll see that we've got a nice clean line there. Okay, so this is going to work out good. So at this point, we're going to save it. File, save. I'll just call this um, can. Alright, leave it. Everything is default. Click save. And we can minimize Photoshop. So let's go ahead and fire up Cinema 4D. This is where it gets fun. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is create a background and we're going to go back in and take note of that document size image image size and we're at 5184 by 3456 so if we come into our project settings we'll do what were we again short term memory loss here 5184 5184 by 3456 3456 Okay, so our image is ma matching our background. So let's create an image or uh, texture here. Double click, go into your material, turn off specular, turn off color, and we're going to select luminance, make it active. Uh, while we're doing this, is because it will let us light the scene, uh, light our primitives uh, in a way that's going to be more realistic if we choose to light them. Primarily, we're going to let the scene, the images, light the scene. So we're going to browse for that texture. We call it can. Let's find that. Let's see here. I guess we call it can. There we go. All right, so we've got that. We're going to drag that onto our background. And here's our scene. All right. 
So next thing we're going to do is we're going to take and create a primitive. We're going to drop in a cylinder and we're going to create that cylinder approximately the size and approximately the shape of the, and position of where that can is. So I'll rotate this around. And we'll get this roughly in place. And then we'll scale it up. Move it about, get it close as we can. Something about like that. Need to go a little bit bigger still. Actually, you'll want to be just a touch larger than the actual item in the scene. Okay, something about like that. All right, now we're going to make a, uh, a, a rec uh, cube. It's going to be illustrative of the countertop. And again, rotate that guy into place. Move it into position so that it's approximate. Get it scaled approximately. All right, I'm going to press C to make that editable. And I'm going to move these points around to line up with the um, countertop here. Something about like that. Something about like that. You're just getting them lined up with the edge. Something about like that. I'm going to drop a uh, camera in here. And with that, I'm going to establish our view. But I'm going to right click it, Cinema 40 tags, and put a uh, protection tag on here so that this camera doesn't move. I'm going to hop out of the camera. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to try to move this surface here of that cube. And jump back into my camera and see if maybe we've got that lined up a little bit. Something about like that. Try to get this as accurate as you can. This is where it's really going to pay off. I'm going to turn X-ray on so I can see my um, edges here. I'm going to hop back out of that camera. Move over here a little bit to select that corner. Hop back in my camera. And I'm just going to move that line right there so that we're on this bottom edge as close as we can. Jump, hop back out of that camera, move over here, select this corner, hop back in my camera, and you got to tweak this a little bit, hop out of the camera, try to manipulate these. back in the camera, hop back out, hop back in, and we're just trying to get this lined up a little bit, something, something about like that, so we've got our edges, all of our edges lined up, and back in our camera, okay, so we've got our can taken care of, we've got our, our countertop taken care of, Let's name this um, foreground, and let's take our cylinder, we'll call that the can, and we're going to head drop a plane in here that's going to be representative of our background. We'll knock its segments down to one and one. We'll rotate this guy so that it's approximate orientation of that background, something about like that. I'm going to move it back in Z space. The more distance we have, the more realistic this uh, move is going to be for us. I'm going to scale that guy out so that it's representative of our scene. Let's move it back a little bit more even. I'm going to rotate that guy just a touch more. 
something about like that and make sure that we're scaled out so that we cover our entire scene okay so we've got our basic scenario set up here so select your camera with the protection tag on it and go up under window and then from here we'll click protection man all right now we're going to select this first item let me close out of here I'm gonna go back into plane and name that in the background okay so let's go back in the window projection man we're going to select this first item the background we're going to right click it choose new projection camera load bitmap and for that we're going to browse to our desktop where I'd save that and we call that can and there it is we'll select it okay so in this it has all the layers of our PSD and because we're working with our background we're going to select the background for the image that's going to represent the background and the alpha portion is going to use that same alpha information in that background so enter OK and you'll see now that it's placed created an image from our PSD file and applied it through the projection of the camera to the plane that we've labeled black background okay we gonna do the same thing for the foreground we're going to move that in under the PSD that we're using as our image and we get our uh, layer selection and because we just put in our foreground we're going to select foreground and foreground for our alpha information and enter OK and it's created an image and applied it to our foreground object and then we've got our final piece our can we're going to drag up and under our PSD okay and at this point we're going to select the can for our image and can for our alpha enter OK and you'll see now that it's applied that I'm going to move this off the screen if I render this out you'll see we've got a few anomalies occurring we've got some of our primitives showing through here for our countertop and some of our primitives showing through here for our can so what we're going to do is we're going to select this can we're going to right click it under cinema 4d tags we're going to choose compositing and under excuse exclusion here under the compass compositing tag information what we're going to do is we're going to exclude the can from itself by dragging it down here and you'll see, I don't know how visible these are, but uh, you've got four objects or assets here that you can manipulate. There's one that's very subtly visible. Click that, and at that point, if we render this, you'll see that it's excluded the non-image containing portion of that primitive. And the countertop uh, has the same problem going on, the foreground. So we're going to right-click it, choose Cinema 4D Tags, Compositing and under its exclusion we're going to tell it to exclude itself and then we're going to tell it to keep the alpha information now at this point if we render that out you'll see that we've got a pretty good look uh, going on where we've got all of our images that uh, projection man has created and applied to our primitives okay so we're going to hop, our, hop in our camera here I'm going to increase my timeline to uh, 400 and now we've got our camera selected we can remove that protection tag select it delete it and we're going to move forward and uh, you'll see that we've got this anomaly occurring again if we were to render that it solves and uh, remedies itself so while we've got our camera selected we're going to put a keyframe at frame zero and we're going to move forward to frame 240 and with our camera selected we're going to move forward a little bit and maybe to the side a touch and down let's get a quick render of that okay and I'm going to put another keyframe here. I'm going to move into keyframe 400. And what I'll do is I'll uh, I'm going to move I'll move back to this direction and maybe put a little twist on the camera. Get a get a look at that there. Okay. I'm going to insert a keyframe at the end, and we'll see how we're moving through this here. You'll see anomalies occurring, things that don't seem consistent. That's just how uh, Cinema 4D is temporarily rendering this in your viewport. But when it renders. Uh, you'll see uh, quite the miracle occur. So I'm going to go into my scene settings. I'm going to change it up to uh, 720p. So it's going to be 1280 by 720. Okay. I'm going to get back here and take another look at that. Make sure we're looking good. Render it just, just quick renders just to see that everything's on target. And I think everything's looking good so what we're going to do now at this point is go in and make our settings to render this out we're going to tell it to save I'll save it to my desktop 
is uh, test. All right, and then we'll go and we're going to tell it to be an AVI. I'm going to use my uh, Cineform uh, codec, and we're going to go under output. We're going to tell it all frames. All right, and I think that's good. So I'll go ahead and render this, and you can speed up through this if you'd like. And we'll just let it render. You can fast forward if you like, but when it's finally done, we'll play it at the end. Okay, we're getting close to it being complete. And once this is done, we'll have a video on our desktop that we can take a look at. Alright, so this is closed. Let's head to our desktop. I've got our video that we've rendered. We'll go ahead and play that. Alright, so we've got a video here. Let's give it a play. You can see how we're able to move towards the can, the can uh, above and past our countertop. You can see parallax happening uh, beyond, behind the can and the foreground. And it uh, truly gives that can a nice 3D look. I'll play it one more time for you. I'll make sure to save a copy of this uh, project if you'd like to play it and look at it yourself and maybe perhaps try something with your own imagery. So, hope this helps you guys. Remember, if you like my channel, please comment, rate, and subscribe. And we'll talk to you later. Bye bye.